Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Corn School. Earlier this season, we were joined by University of Guelph researcher Josh Nasalski for a conversation about in-season nitrogen loss. Josh is back on this episode, and he's joined by his Guelph colleague, Jin Wook Kim, and graduate student, John Wang Kang. Together, they're going to demonstrate to growers how to measure ammonia volatilization in season using the dosimeter method. All right, John Wan, um, let's say you're an agronomist or a farmer, and you're interested in measuring volatilization losses from your fertilizer application. You can do it pretty easily with uh, equipment or supplies you would get at your local safety supply store. So how about you run us through how to do that? So actually, we cannot see ammonia gas with our naked eye, so we need some tools. So first, we need this dosimeter. This dosimeter will capture ammonia gas from the ground. Uh, so you can see pretty easily with your reading the dosimeter. And also another tool is you need a chamber. So you grab this one bucket and make eight holes on the top. And also another eight holes on the side. And we, you can just put the chamber on the top of a dosimeter. So this is how we do it, pretty easy. Yeah, and so obviously you would go and check uh, regular, uh, regularly to check and measure the, uh, look at the dosimeter to see how much uh, volatilization is occurring. Uh, in terms of placement of these chambers, uh, you know, you want to put it on a representative area of the field. So if you're banding fertilizer, you want to put it right on the center of the band. Uh, if you're broadcasting, you want it on a fairly representative area. And in terms of how many chambers you need on a field, I think four is a good number. You probably don't need more than that. And if you're doing side-by-side -side comparisons of anything, again, you would probably want four in, in each, of your, uh, each of your comparisons to see how your strategy is working. All right, JK, so uh, it's just after nitrogen application, we set up our dosimeter chamber, and now we want to start recording losses. So how do we do that? Yeah, so after it's set up the, the chambers, you usually read the dosimeter's readings. Actually, you can break the tip of the dosimeters, and the dosimeter start capturing ammonia gas. So if the dosimeter ca captured ammonia gas, the color changed from purple to yellow, so we read the, the area of the yellow part, so we just record in our data. Right on, and so it's a number from zero to 500, right? Yes, actually the unit is the zero to 500, so when you measure the, the, the ammonia gas, we put the ammonia gas is reached the 500 ppm, you can swap another one, but important thing is the ammonia gas is accumulated data. So when you change the dosimeter, you should record. So for example, you change the ammonia, dosimeters at 500 ppm, the next day is the 300, 300 ppm, actually the, the value is 800 ppm, so that's important. So how often should you be checking these dosimeters and recording uh, the loss values? Yes, in our experiment we measured every day for a week, and after that we measured every two days until 21 days. Yeah. But I believe farmers are always busy, so they decide the interval according to their schedules, but in my Based in my experience, after three or four days, after setting the chambers, actually ammonia gas rapidly increased. So maybe it's better for you to check every four or five days. Yeah. So as scientists, we're going to check this every day, but busy farmers and agronomists will check this, you would say, every five days at the most. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, and how often or for how long? We start these record, we start measuring right after application, as soon as possible. How long do we go? Actually, we measured until 21 days for three weeks. Yeah, Actually, yeah. after three weeks, the data pattern is very clear. The effect of the urease inhibitors or also the different nitrogen method, broadcasting injected, the, the data is very clear. So mm -hmm. after 21 days, we can stop, I believe. Now, one last thing. So these dosimeters read up to 500 ppm. Uh, once you reach 500 ppm, you have to swap it and replace it with a new one, like you mentioned. In general, how often do you need to swap these over a th your three-week or four-week period? Yeah, Josh, as you mentioned, the nitrogen fertilization is very highly affected by the soil condition or weather. That's totally based on environmental conditions. So what I'm thinking, after a week, you should you can check every day and uh, check the data patterns. So if it very rapidly increased, you mm -hmm. can check more open. Otherwise, maybe you can check more late. But it totally depends on environmental conditions, where you are, where your farming site is located. 
So JK, over a 21 day period, how often uh, are you swapping in a fresh dosimeter? Actually, it depends on environmental conditions, but it usually changes maybe two to five times. Maybe okay. it would be better, yeah. And in terms of the total losses over that period, you know, in terms of PPM, what are you seeing across Ontario? Actually, in Winchester, I found that the nitrogen volatilization is low and Aurora is in a like kind of a middle, and, but in the southern area, like Richtown and Harrow, it shows a more high nitrogen volatilization. So as you mentioned, it's totally based on environmental conditions. So maybe it's due to the soil textures or pH or in the weather or temperatures. It all factors is affects the nitrogen volatilization. So at Winchester, we're looking at, you know, 2000 PPM losses over that 23 week period. And at a place like Richhan or Harrow, it might be 4,000 or 5,000. Exactly. Yes. The, yeah. In Aurora, it's the reached around the 3,000 ppm, the actually in Richie Town is 4,000 ppm, and in the Hello it's the most southern area, it actually reached the 5,000 ppm until 21 days. Thanks, JK. Uh, so yeah, the dosimeter method is a great tool that farmers and agronomists have to uh, check up on their strategies and uh, try to make some better decisions on their farm in terms of nitrogen management.